This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. With the presidential election just two weeks away, we look at the richest man in the world, one of Donald Trump's biggest financial backers, tech billionaire Elon Musk. He's poured an additional $75 million into his pro-Trump super PAC. And at a campaign town hall in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Saturday, Musk pledged to give away $1 million to voters who signed his super PAC online petition in battleground states. He pledged to give this every day $1 million away until Election Day. I have a surprise for you, uh, which is that uh, we are going to be awarding a $1 million to uh, randomly to people who have signed the signed the petition every day from now until the, the election to be eligible for the 1 million dollars petition signers must be registered to vote and live in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. Many say this is illegal. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro was asked if must sweep stakes was legal during an interview with Meet the Press Sunday. I think there are real questions with how he is spending money uh, in this race, how the dark money is flowing, uh, not just into Pennsylvania, but apparently now into the pockets of Pennsylvanians. Um, that is deeply concerning. I think it's something that law enforcement could take a look at. I'm not okay. the attorney general anymore of Pennsylvania. I'm the governor. Uh, but it does raise some serious questions. Meanwhile, a new investigation by The New York Times looks at Musk's influence over the federal government with two of his companies, SpaceX and Tesla, accounting for at least $15.4 billion in government contracts over the past decade. For more, we'll go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Eric Lipton, who co-authored the Times investigation headlined U.S. agencies fund and fight with Elon Musk. A Trump presidency could give him power over them. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Uh, can you start off by by responding to this promise that Elon Musk has made, a million dollars a day to voters in battleground states who sign his super PAC petition, Eric. I don't really know the legality of that proposal. I suspect, I have to imagine that there were lawyers that examined that before he made that proposal and that promise. Um, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that's a trivial amount of money for Elon Musk. He's the richest person in the world. He's presumably the richest person in the history of the world. So that's a pretty small amount of to invest in this in the final days of this election campaign. And he has, uh, you know, literally billions of dollars at stake um, of, of his own business operations, both is in terms of contracts that he has with the federal government. And, uh, you know, millions of dollars at stake in terms of the many investigations that are ongoing of his company. So that's kind of like pocket change, relatively right. speaking. For well, him. of course, the significance is uh, it may be trivial for him, but for people who would receive it, that's the question. Is it a payoff? Right. Um, but Eric— Right. And I can't— I can't address the legality of that. That's up to lawyers and, uh, and regulators to address. So talk about this piece that you've just done. You're a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Um, it, this investigative report is quite remarkable. Lay out um, his empire and the all, but most importantly, also, the contracts he gets from the U.S. government and what a Trump presidency is, of course, ex uh, supporting Trump big time, would mean for him. I don't think that it's reasonable to presume that he would get, you know, necessarily more contracting dollars if Trump were president. Uh, he, he is already incredibly popular because of SpaceX almost exclusively, really, the bulk of it. Uh, and it's because he's, his business has been so successful at transforming access to, to to orbit and also communications from orbit. And so both with NASA and the Department of Defense, they're they're spending billions of dollars to buy services from him because he's delivering things that other companies aren't delivering. So on that side of the ledger, I you know, I he, I think he's going to continue to see an increase in business with the federal government because of the services that SpaceX is is providing. But the real question is on the investigative side, because Elon Musk is so determined to get things done, and ultimately his real goal is to get humans to Mars, that he often likes to kind of, you know, cut corners when it comes to regulations. He wants to bulldoze his way through. 
And so he has an incredible array of disagreements with federal agencies that oversee his operations, both from Tesla and from SpaceX. And so it's really all you could go through the acronym soup of the United States government. And just about every major agency has some pending investigation, in many cases involving repeat offenses and you know multiple fines and or, or ongoing investigations. And so it's the thing that is most uh, potentially problematic is if he is in fact going to be appointed by Trump to to be the head of some efficiency committee that's going to examine federal regulators and the powers that they have and also examine their budgets. How is it possible that he could be simultaneously the subject of multiple investigations, the the recipient of billions of dollars in contract, and the guy that's going to be deciding how to curb regulatory powers and how to how to reduce the expenditures for these agencies? It's just way too many roles that creates obvious potential or real conflicts of interest. Um, let me ask you, last year alone, Elon Musk's company secured $3 billion in contracts from 17 federal agencies. Um, are, do you think we're talking about, to say the least, an over-dependence on Musk's companies, which are private companies? And talk more about, you know, Tesla, about uh, SpaceX, and how it's intertwined with the government. Yeah, the bulk of that money really is going to uh, SpaceX. There's a relatively small amount that goes to Tesla. Um, and the, most of that money, the biggest chunk of it, it goes for launch. And the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the two reliable rockets that, that Elon Musk and SpaceX have, are just the, the workhorses, both for NASA and for the Department of Defense and for the intelligence community. And, uh, you know, the it's a combination of factors that— he has been so successful in designing, you know, an engineering design uh, on his rockets and the reusability of the, uh, the of parts of it that no one else can really match him. And you know, uh, Lockheed and Boeing, and they have a consortium that's called United Launch Alliance that's really struggled to get a new rocket going. It still is not ready for national security launches. So the Department of Defense, in particular, is really reliant upon SpaceX. And, and I've written about this separately in another story earlier this year, just how completely dependent uh, the United States currently is on him. And I mean, it's partially, it's not as if they're giving him contracts because of who he is. They're giving him contracts because he can reliably get uh, you know, the NASA satellites and Defense Department and intelligence satellites in the space. So, if you could talk about, for example, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration opening five investigations into Tesla's safety issues, and also um, uh, Tesla's ongoing legal battles with the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, including cases where the company tried to block rulings punishing Musk for anti-union tweets. Right. I mean, I'm, I, I have, there's so many of these investigations. I, I have a little cheat sheet that I kind of built as I was uh, kind of scouring the reach of the federal government to look at all the dockets and pull together information about each of these. But yes, the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has five different ongoing active investigations relating to things like unintended acceleration, um, steering wheel detachment, steering loss, and of course, most most popularly, uh, the self-driving um, and the fatal accident involving self-driving. Uh, and so that's just at one division of the U.S. Department of Transportation. At, over next door at the FAA, uh, they recently fined SpaceX uh, about $600,000 based on their uh, conclusion that SpaceX had improperly uh, uh, conducted two launches last year out of Florida that they were not compliant with safety requirements. So that's that's two divisions of, of DOT. Um, there's also a the uh, the transportation also is was investigating. Uh, this is the Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Administration, another division of transportation. So now it's three different agencies in the one cabinet department. Uh, find uh, uh, the Neuralink, which is uh, building implants into brains to help people, uh, you know, who are either disabled uh, to to see again or to maybe to walk again. But Neuralink was shipping hazardous materials without a hazardous materials permit. So that was another in investigation and fine. 
Um, so, I mean, that's just one federal agency, well, but it goes on and on. There's over a dozen. Eric, the Department of Justice. We're going to have to leave it there, um, but I want to okay. thank you for being with us. Eric Lipton, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, investigative reporter at The New York Times, will link to your piece. U.S. agencies fund and fight with Elon Musk. A Trump presidency could give him power over them.